I haven't made an explained video in quite a while, and with my Toge Inomaki explained video recently becoming one of the most watched videos on YouTube, I feel like you guys deserve another one. But this time, it's not gonna be with the sweet and silent salmon boy. Instead, we're gonna be talking about the nasty narcissist himself, Naobito Zenin. Just a reminder, if you're an anime only, please hey bro, proceed with caution, watch because day, Naobito's curse technique hasn't been revealed yet in the anime. I'm also going to be spoiling some parts of the manga, so if you don't want to be spoiled, well too bad, I'm going to give you 3 seconds to leave, starting now. Three, two, two, one. Got a blast. Okay, so I'm pretty positive that no one fully understands how Naobito's curse technique, Projection Sorcery, actually works. And if you're coming from the Jujutsu Kaisen subreddit and are like, <laughs> Um, actually, it's quite simple. How can you not get it? Seriously, if you really knew how it worked, then why are you watching this video right now, huh? Yeah, checkmate, asshole. <clears throat> Sorry, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by myself, projection sorcery is a very complicated skill to grasp as well as to use, because the technique requires the user to have a firm knowledge on how animation frames work. So what are animation frames? Well, the best way to describe it is if you take a YouTube video, let's say this one or the many other videos you can watch in my channel after this, you can pause at any point in the video and that will be considered a frame. And essentially what Naobito's technique does is it takes one second and cuts it up into 24 blank frames. And then what he can do with these frames is that he can pretty much draw out what he wants to do before actually doing them. Think of it like writing out a blueprint, but what makes this such a powerful technique is that he can skip to any of these 24 frames. The easiest way to understand this is with the actual manga panel used to explain the technique. So we see here that in frame 1 out of 24, this person is just about to jump. I'm going to jump! No! And by frame 18, they're already about to land. So if this was Naobito, then he could pretty much skip directly to the 18th frame without having to do any of the other movements. So what you or the opponent would see is Naobito going like this to this. This creates the illusion of speed because in reality, Naobito is essentially teleporting from his original place to his desired frame. Another cool thing about this technique is that whatever is touched by the user's palm also has to obey to this 24 frames per second rule. This means that they also have to plan out their movements beforehand. And if they can't, then they're frozen in place, completely vulnerable for one whole second. I know, I know, your head's probably hurting right now. So let me give you an example you can definitely follow along with. So let me guess, you're probably a gamer, aren't you? Okay, imagine you were touched by Naobito, and now you have to plan out your next movements in 24 frames. You settle to just casually walk away from the situation, but all of a sudden your godly gamer instincts kick in and you start Fortnite dancing uncontrollably. Well, sorry kiddo, now you're frozen for one second. So now that you've hopefully understood how the technique works, you're probably thinking, okay, then why doesn't he just pass through walls or break the sound barrier or something like that? Well, sorry Einstein, that's not how science works. What I meant to say was, don't worry, Gege thought this one out as well. Because one of the many limitations of projection sorcery is that the user can only plan out their movements inside their own field of view. Because obviously, if you can't see where you're going, then you can't go there. Another limitation, and this one is one of the bigger ones, is that you can't break the laws of physics, nor can you ignore the trajectory of movement. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, you can't be standing still on one frame, and then the next, you're backflipping 20 times in the air. Everything has to be rational, and most importantly, humanly possible. And lastly, the biggest weakness of projection sorcery is honestly the simplest. If you're going to be drawing out a predetermined set of movements, then you're going to be forced to end up in the position that you intended to be in. Doesn't matter if there's a bomb in front of you, or a gang of 13 year olds waiting for you because you said Fortnite is trash. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. 
Now, I know I said in the title of this video that it's now Beto's curse technique, but not long ago, we found out that it's actually an inherited technique. Now, if you don't know what that means, I have a video talking about inherited curse techniques in the description below. But it essentially means that Naoya, Nobito's son, has the same curse technique as his father, but the catch is, it's stronger. So, we know that Nobito can divide one second into 24 frames. That in itself might be impressive already, but what makes Naoya's ability even stronger is that he can most likely increase the number of frames he can divide in a single second. Now, this hasn't been explicitly stated yet, but the manga provided us with a lot of clues that suggest this to be true. The first clue we have is when Naoya says that he should try upping his speed. Now, we established earlier that speed is just an illusion. The user is just skipping to a different frame. So here, upping his speed could mean that he's actually increasing the number of frames that he uses. Maybe instead of dividing into 24 frames per second, Naoya can divide up to, let's say, like 60 frames per second. You may think I'm reaching here, but another and more obvious clue that the manga gives us is in this panel, where Naobito says, These days, it's all about resolution and wanting to increase frame rate. He literally says it's possible to increase the number of frames one can divide. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Think of it like advancing in technology. Before, the old generation had clunky computers that ran really slow and had 8-bit displays. Now we have crystal retina displays on our MacBooks and phones. It's the same with the Zenins. Now Bito is the old generation and Naoya is the next generation, constantly improving their frames per second and constantly improving their speed performance. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I explained it as easy as possible. I just got a job recently, so my upload schedule might be impacted a bit, but I hope you guys can continue on supporting me. I really wouldn't have been here without each and every one of you. And yeah, see you on the next one.